and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Before we get started, what are we drinking, Adam? Today we are drinking Antonio Bay American Wheat Ale. Mm. If you want the recipe, click the link up there. Today we're going to bring to you 1987's Near Dark, co-written and directed by Catherine Bigelow. And she did The Hurt Locker. And uh, she did Point Break. The late Bill Paxton is in this. Lance Henriksen is in this. Uh, he was in Pumpkinhead and uh, Hard Target, just to name a couple. Adrienne Pastar is in this. Uh, he was in Top Gun, uh, Carlito's Way. Joshua John Miller was in this as well. He was in Halloween 3, Dan Chalice's son. Yeah. Eight more days till Halloween. <laughs> He's also in Death Warrant, which is another Van Damme movie. The Sandman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing, man. It's just soda pop. You're going to drink soda pop. <laughs> so Near Dark starts off with the main character, Caleb. Typical country cowboy type guy. He's all in the denim. He's yeah. Got the cowboy hat on. Driving the pickup truck. His friend has some giant Giant, hat? like super <laughs> on the verge of being absurd. Thousand yeah. gallon <laughs> yeah. hats. Caleb runs into this character, May. Instant sparks, right? Tone of, of, of this scene is set perfectly by the music, which is by Tangerine Dream. May's very obsessed with the, the night and the stars and listen to the night. May realizes how late it is. I gotta get home now. I'll take you home, but you gotta kiss me first. May goes in and bites him on the neck, jumps out of the truck and takes off. He's wondering what the hell's happened. He's trying to get the truck to start and it won't start. Decides to walk home and he starts all smoldering and smoking <laughs> yeah. and turning all black yeah, and, and sooty. Daddy, is that Caleb? What's wrong with him? He looks sick. <laughs> looks more than yeah. sick. His RV barrels around the corner, door opens, take Caleb into the RV and takes off. We get introduced to the characters in the RV and it's Severin is hostile off the bat. I'm gonna rip your face off. Jesse says he's one of us now. We'll give him a week. Caleb needs to kill and feed to be able to survive because he is getting ill. Then there's a cool montage where it shows where each member of, of the clan goes out and gets their prey at night. The little kid, Homer, he fakes that he's hurt on the bike. Then someone comes up and he'll, ah! May and Caleb pretend to be hitchhiking to get picked up by this truck driver. Ever drive a truck before? <laughs> Come on, baby! Yeah. Give it to me, baby! <laughs> May is giving Caleb the eye the whole time. Go for the kill. May actually ends up killing the, the, the truck driver herself. Let's Caleb feed off of her. That scene is just so symbolic where they're in this big, like, field with these oil drills penetrating the, the, the ground, ground right? <laughs> yeah. With the music, yeah, that, right? that awesome music. It's just such an epic, cool shot. It sort of converges onto this honky-tonk country bar to give Caleb the opportunity to have a good kill himself. Yeah. He still hasn't made his first kill. Exactly. This is like his last chance. They barge right in, trying to get this guy riled up, and he goes to punch him, and he moves Caleb in the way, yeah. and he all punches Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb gets all mad, and he just fucking ribs him one, eh? He goes flying into the, into the pool table. Jesse's all putting a charm on this waitress, and they come up from behind her with a straight razor and slit her throat. They collect her blood in a, in a beer mug. The bartender, meanwhile, has loaded a shotgun and he ends up shooting Caleb right through the chest. Doesn't die though, yeah, eh? which fine, is, yeah, yeah, he's fine. May has sort of kept this kid for Caleb. Come on, now's your time, now's yeah. your time. He jumps out the window <laughs> and he takes off like anybody would do. Yeah. Caleb chases him down and he grabs him and he's getting ready to bite him. He just can't do it and he just lets him go. He's James LaGrosse from Phantasm 2. They hole up in this hotel. The cops come and they start shooting the shit out of this hotel. Yeah. Sunlight comes through and burns him, right? And yeah. it's, ah! Caleb kind of takes it upon himself, wraps himself in this, in this blanket, runs out to the van that they have. It looks like it's his real skin that's burning. Especially when they show the hand, grasp the door, it looks like a bare hand on fire. And drives it straight through into the hotel room and he rescues everybody. Totally redeemed himself. From here, they kind of make their way to another hotel room. Homer sees this little girl. You want to come back to the room there and watch some TV? You get this kind of sense that 
He's lonely. So Homer brings the little girl back to their hotel room just to watch TV, just for some companionship. So it seems. Yeah, so it seems. You really don't know what yeah. his intention is. Caleb comes back to the room there, and he notices, hey, that's my sister, right? And they kind of embrace. Yeah. Caleb's dad breaks through into the into the hotel room, and he's got a gun. There's a bit of a standoff there, and that's where we're going to stop it. Yeah. Caleb has to choose between his old family or his new family. <laughs> yeah. The first thing that I'll mention about Near Dark is that it is a vampire movie that does not use the term vampire once yeah, which in is the it? whole movie. There's enough there where you don't need to say vampire. The guy is burning in the sun. They say he needs to kill to live. Yeah. Nowhere in this movie do you see fangs either. It completely turns the whole vampire theme on its head. Yeah. They don't sleep in coffins. They travel during the daytime. Most vampire movies, it'd be cool to be a vampire. That life would be so cool. <laughs> in, but in this movie, it's like, nah, this seems pretty shitty. Like, yeah. these guys have a real kind of vagabond awful existence it doesn't glorify the vampire lifestyle whatsoever no not one bit sometimes you feel bad it's like oh yeah look at these yeah. guys they look like shit you know yeah. feel kind of bad then they fucking go on a rampage and just destroy people yeah. completely and then you don't feel bad you hate them the music by tangerine dream is so fitting for this movie yeah. it works so well whenever there's a movie with tangerine dream music <laughs> you know it's going to be good yeah. right the film work is amazing in this movie which we kind of touched upon with the oil derricks and all that yeah. right the use of light at nighttime was really cool yeah. right yeah. you know the the way they light a lot of the scenes is neat and also the shootout uh, in in the motel there during the day when yeah. the lights coming in. There's totally aspects that could be bored from Interview with the Vampire. Oh man, yeah. Like lots of aspects. Like uh, Caleb is totally like the character of Louis, who kind of refuses to kill, and Lestat is very much kind of almost like Severin, heartless, the heartless, and... brash, uh, will kill someone in a heartbeat to feed. Uh, just getting a kick out of it yeah. too, eh? Yeah. Homer is a lot like um, Claudia. Yeah, you know, just the kid, yeah. right? Who yearns for her, her own kind, but not necessarily vampire. Yeah, but just her own age. Yeah, yeah, just somebody else to be with. Bill Paxton's in it. He's in Terminator One. This guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. Yeah. Lance Henriksen's in it. He's in Terminator 1. Jeanette Goldstein is in it. She's in Terminator 2. She plays John Connor's stepmom. Do what your mother tells you. It's not my mother, Todd. <laughs> Robert Wingley yeah. plays the biker guy in Near Dark and the biker guy in Terminator 2. The... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Throws him on that stove. <laughs> Take, Take it! it. No! <laughs> Terminator kind of connection with, with Near Dark. And it's neat, yeah. yeah I never neat. realized that until you mentioned that. It's like, holy shit, you're right, yeah. Great 80s vampire <laughs> movie. Like, it reeks of the 80s. The soundtrack by Tangerine Dream is super 80s. Yeah. The, the way the movie is shot stylistically, it's so 80s. Severin's all punk. Yeah. You well, know, they're all kind of punky looking, right? A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're a fan of any 80s vampire movie, this movie is kind of not so much as adored as movies like The Lost Boys. You have to see Near Dark if you like Lost Boys, if you like From Dust Till Dawn. Oh, yeah. Interview yeah. with the, the Vampire. vampire. Yeah. Uh, you totally check out Near Dark if you haven't seen it. It's a, it's a vampire 80s masterpiece. It's which, a whole yeah. melange yeah. of things. <laughs> which which takes a vampire concept and just goes, yeah. flips it on its back and is a, is a neat different take. Yeah.